Hey, future badass business owner. Welcome back to the Start a Small Business podcast, where each episode we'll be walking you through the process of getting your small business from concept to open for business. In this episode, we're going to take a deeper dive into your ideal customer and what their pain points are and possibly finding out a niche that might be the best one for you to serve. First, let's talk about who your ideal customer is. In order to discover this person, you have to know what an ideal customer even means. Your ideal customer is that specific customer that is in most need of your service or products. And they are also most likely to purchase that product or service. For example, as a dog groomer, you would like to think that all owners of dogs are your ideal customer. But while that will be nice, it isn't necessarily true. Some dog owners could care less about ever grooming their dogs. They aren't your ideal customer. Some dog owners would never pay someone to cut their dog's hair or give them a bath. They are also not your ideal customer. There are some folks that spend their entire paycheck on rent, food, etc. And while they would love to have someone groom their dog, they just can't afford it at all. This is also not your ideal customer. Some people are just cheap and want everything for the cheapest they can get. Trust me, you don't want this person to be your ideal customer either. So who is your ideal customer? Well, more than likely, your ideal customer has some disposable income and the lack of skills or time to bathe or cut their dog's hair. So let's stick with this dog grooming business. Who is their ideal customer? Well, more than likely, it is a customer that has a disposable income and a lack of skills or time to be able to bathe or cut their dog's hair. They want someone they trust with their fur babies and someone who will not traumatize them. The dogs, that is, not the humans. You can dive in deep into the ideal person, but I'm not asking you to go crazy like some other people will tell you to do. I just want you to be focused on who is most likely to give you the money that you are asking for what it is that you do. For example, a garage door company should not target a community that has homes that only have carports. That's just a waste of their time and money. Your mission is to sit down and flesh out who is most likely to pay you money to do what it is that you do. And once you know who your ideal customer is, it is the time to identify what their pain points are and why they would want to use your product or service in the first place. For example, if I'm a landscaper, I could say that I want all the neighbors that have grass, bushes, and weeds. They are my ideal customer. While they all could use my services, this part is true. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to reach out and contact me, especially if there are tons of other landscapers in the area. Why do I stand out over them? However, if I was to focus on homeowners who live in an HOA community, they are probably going to have a pain point at some point in time when the HOA starts to send out their letters talking about weeds and the fact that the HOA is going to charge them $50 because of these weeds. Yes, these people can pull the weeds themselves, but the pain point has now been created by the HOA who's now on their butt and now they don't have the time or energy to do it. Now, sometimes people will get to the second fine for an additional $50 or $100 and now that pain point becomes even greater and guess what? They start trying to find the landscapers who can come take care of the weeds. This is the time that the landscaper can zip in and have a great chance of getting this business because the pain point is so great in this homeowner. The homeowner is going to be willing to pay whatever it takes to get the HOA off their back. Here's another example. Let's say I'm a homeowner and I'd have no desire for a plumber today, but tomorrow my water heater breaks. Now I have a pain point. I need this water heater to be fixed ASAP. My pain point is now a broken water heater and the fact that there's water either going all over my house or I can't get hot water at all. So the odds are I, the homeowner, are going to get online and I'm going to start Googling plumber or more importantly, I might start Googling water heater repair or replacement. Those that have identified pain points that they solve in Google, specifically towards water heaters, have a much higher chance of being selected by this customer who now has this pain point associated with their water heater. If you think about it, everybody has a pain point, even those dog owners that we discussed earlier. They're using a groomer because that groomer solves the pain point of their dog's hair being too long and now it's getting poop stuck in it. There's a pain point everywhere that everybody has. Your goal is how you identify what that pain point is and how can you market to it. Remember, P 
people don't need you until they need you. And they know they need you because the pain point gets triggered. Your goal is to make sure that your ideal customers know that you are in business and you can solve these pain points. Which brings us to our third point, niche or not to niche. Do you want to really dial down your business so much? Well, it can be definitely be beneficial. Should you be a landscaper, a dog groomer, a plumber, or should you be a weed specialist, a long haired dog specialist, or even the water heater king? There's a slight difference. You still do the same thing, but you're identifying as something specific so that way you are linked to the pain point that people have. Some people have found the riches are in the niches. These folks have also found that by being a specialist, it can lead them to more money because they now become the go-to person for that specific thing. For example, if a plumber wanted to focus on water heaters only, they can build a great business. Now the town sees them as the water heater king, like I joked around earlier because they specialize in this one thing. It doesn't mean they can't do anything else to do with plumbing. It just means that they've built this niche where if you have a water heater problem, they're the go-to person for them to do. And if I groom dogs, let's just say that I can specialize in dogs with severe anxiety. I can build a great reputation that makes me the go-to person for this specific type of dog. It doesn't mean I can't groom other dogs. It just means that if you have a specific pain point of a dog with high anxiety, you're more likely to use me. There are landscapers who can do everything under the sun, but there are also landscapers who specialize in weed control or just in cleaning and trimming palm trees. There are folks that start off as a handyman, but end up focusing on one area that they love. For example, doing garage floor epoxies or maybe deck repairs. I could go on and on about all of these areas, but the biggest takeaway I want you to have from this episode is to really focus on who your ideal customer is, what pain points you plan to be solving, and how you can use both of these to carve out a niche that your business can really latch onto and grow. Please know that it doesn't mean that you're not going to get all the other people. Think of it this way. When you are shooting at a target, you aim for the center of the bullseye. Do you always hit it? No, but at least you hit the target. However, if you only aim for the target, you're going to miss the target a lot of the time because you're not focused enough. So the key is use the niche thing that you want to go after as your bullseye and pick up all the other business around it. All I'm asking you to do is to narrow your focus and save yourself a lot of time and money from chasing people that will never use your business. The sooner you focus on who you want, the sooner you can build the following that you want to build. Give folks a reason to find you and use you. Solve their problems. Let them know you are the person that they should be using. Now, in our next episode, we're going to dive into a business plan because a lot of people ask, do they need one? So we're going to try to dive in and answer that. Don't forget to pick up your startup guide in the show notes, download all the other episodes. So this way you are ready to open your new business. And please don't forget to head on over to the Badass Business Owner Podcast because we're going to help you through the rest of your business once you open those doors. And don't forget to check out the YouTube channel as well. See you on the next episode.